Hey folks, uh, okay, so no musical intro this time. I, uh, I want to take this little quick bit in the beginning to plug something very important. For those of you who uh, did not hear my, uh, my dot .hack uh, memories curbla that I did last weekend, the day after I put that up, uh, something very important was uh, featured on Anime News Network's front page. Uh, there is a uh, fundraising campaign going on for uh, voice actress Brianna Brosey, uh, who is the voice of Tsukasa in the Dot .hack sign anime series. Uh, very long story short, you can read the full story. I'll have a link to it here on to the, uh, the You Caring page. But basically, uh, she suffered a, a very terrible injury that is preventing her from being able to do her work. And, uh, you know, her and her family and everyone who's taking care of this uh, could really use your help. So I'm going to this, place this link here. Uh, if you are able to donate anything at all, every little bit helps. Uh, you know, it's really important, and I, I want to give back to uh, Brianna because she's an amazing performer, and, uh, you know, anything that any of us can do to help uh, would be fantastic. So uh, so go ahead and do that. And uh, in the meantime, our, so I guess moving forward with the, the topic at hand, I just wanted to, to put that out there real quick. Uh, this uh, this weekend's question comes from Mayan Expression. Hey, Curb, what do you think is the line in terms of what kinds of stories can and cannot be told to children? Kind of tying into this discussion, I think maturity is a combination of subject matter and how it's presented. Like, what you were saying about DBZ, the show, in a way, touches upon the subject of death, but presents it in a very relaxed and expendable fashion. And there's many adult media that does this in the same fashion. But then you have the death scene in Lion King, which paints the subject in a far more realistic manner. Yet the movie is considered family-friendly or kid-friendly. But when you have a show like Batman the Animated Series, which touches upon a lot of dark subject matters, including abusive relationships, that you won't normally find in kids' media or even present it with such maturity on adult media... With this in mind, do you think it's possible to tell any kind of story to any kind of age range as long as it presents, its, uh, presents it properly and with tact? Or are there definitive subject matters that cannot be told to certain audiences? All right, so I'll say up front, this is probably going to be one that I end up repeating some information from other Curb blogs, some of which I can't remember off the top of my head, so I apologize if I'm a little broken recordy on this one. But uh, nonetheless, um, this is kind of an interesting case because... It harkens back to uh, when I was first really starting to think about this. It was when I was beginning to watch uh, a lot of anime series in Japanese. Um, as a kid, and, and I think a lot of people kind of go through this, especially those who are kind of in my age range or so, um, you know, when you discover like, oh, but there's stuff on, on the shows that I grew up with that's censored because American companies have to, have to dumb it down for the kids in the U.S., but we want the original version because it's all adult and it's got cursing and death and blood and, and whatever, you know, and boobs in it, you know, et cetera, uh, kind of thing. And, um, you know, I had a lot of that going on with, um, you know, various shows, particularly the Saturday morning or I guess just – you know, regularly televised Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon kind of stuff. Nickelodeon didn't really have any anime stuff, but you know what I mean. Uh, you know, a lot of the Toonami shows and Kids WB and Fox Box and all that stuff, you know, uh, for kids TV. And not exclusively for kids. I'm not here to just take a, take a shit all over them, obviously. But I thought a lot about that back in the day, and I was thinking about, you know, oh, but th this is for adults. And then I, I kind of quickly discovered as I was uh, going through high school that it wasn't necessarily like, oh, these shows are for adults and they're being dumbed down for us. Uh, it was a matter of, I, I, in my case, then I learned that the Japanese have a very different sensibility of uh, what is considered adult and what is considered, you know, appropriate for children. Because, you know, and, and it's funny because I think about that in terms of uh, what is actually immature and mature to people. Like, like they're kind of more direct about that because, for sure, American um, – television and, and media in general is definitely much more protective in terms of like, oh, you know, we got to we got to shield the kids from any awful concepts that, that they, they, you know, they shouldn't be, uh, you know, exposed to or whatever. And and this whole deal with uh, with kind of with anime is, is is anime and also weirdly enough, South Park, um, those those two things kind of tie together in, in a strange way, because I guess before the big anime boom hit with with Pokemon, just before that South Park hit and I knew people you know, in like younger than me, I, I was, uh, I think it was in fourth grade when the show came out, maybe a little before that, but I was continuing to watch like the first season or whatever, first couple seasons on Saturday. Cause I'd have to sneak to watch it with my dad. Uh, cause he wanted to see it. And, uh, but I knew kids that were just being allowed to stay up that late and watch the show with no issues from their parents or anything at the time. Or, you know, if they did, then they'd still watch it anyway. And, you know, like you could say South Park's not you know, appropriate for children and, oh, it's not, it's not intended for children and children shouldn't be watching it, but they were, and they were liking it. And for the most part, they were understanding of what it was.
Dragon Ball actually is a good example, not just because um, the, the person who asked this question brought it up, but because it actually kind of applies to exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, I have distinct memories of people, you know, I, the stories I told on the, the Dragon Ball Curve blogs a while ago about, like, you know, oh, like, Dragon Ball is this, like, adult show, and, like, oh, man, and this and that, and it's totally for adults or whatever, right? And, like, it's really not. Like, I, I think I've, I know I've said this before. Like, you know, that, that was a show that was in – it was a comic that was in a magazine aimed towards little boys, and it is a kid show. It's the reason why it is also on it – was, it was on Kids Network's – for the most part, on uh, in in the U.S., you know, but um, but it has violence, it has death and killing and blood and boobs and poop jokes and, you know, whatever, like a lot of just things that that it, that I guess people in the U.S. would consider not appropriate for kids. It's got nudity in it sometimes. <laughs> Goku runs around naked quite a bit in Dragon Ball, um, but that type of stuff is funny to kids. You know, like, it, 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 it's no accident. It's I don't even think it's just necessarily, like, I mean, it, it is a bit of a cultural thing in terms of, like, you know, yes, the, the, the humor sensibility is different and, and that kind of thing. But but what I'm saying is kids who are watching that are finding it amusing and, and funny, you know, just as, as an example, uh, because that is in, if you want to def define it this way, basically, it's immature. You know, like, some people could look at that and go, oh, that's those are mature things because it's you know it's death and killing and, and nudity or whatever you know but that's also like oh that's cool because i'm a kid and i want to see that you know it's like so in, in a way it is also immature and I, that's kind of how it weighs in if it's like, oh this is a kid show because it's just like you know some of the violence can be a little superfluous or you know or, or the the nudity is just like as a joke it's not necessarily done tastefully and that's you know that's not a strike against dragon ball it is what it is and it's just kind of like inherently part of what made it interesting and funny and et cetera. Um, that's just how it was. But again, that, that goes back to that. It is, it is a, it is a series that is aimed towards a younger audience. And that was the, the kind of, you know, the sensibility that the Toriyama had for making that series, you know? Um, so there's that. And, uh, you know, with, with American cartoons, I think I might've brought this up on uh, my curb blog about Korra's ending <laughs> is that, um, I think that now we're on the cusp of sort of a revolution where, we're beginning to have uh, more shows that are kind of in this in-between area. They're not necessarily just for kids or for adults. Again, not the company, just the the aim towards for, for kids. You know, for kids. Um, <clears throat> because that was how it was for a while. It was like, it was either, you know, daytime, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, Disney, whatever. Uh, and younger, if you had like, you know, Nick Jr. kind of stuff or, you know, PBS Kids, etc. Uh, or, you know, Adult Swim, Comedy Central, MTV, like, you know adult cartoons that kind of thing um but now there's becoming a lot more you know shades of gray between those two different things and now especially also with um you know not just internet stuff but like netflix and hulu and amazon where like they're doing things that you know they can kind of just do whatever they want they're not necessarily held up to the same kind of like standards and practices and standards and practices is definitely a big factor as to why you know those things are the way that they are but i think it also is like a standpoint of like okay like we're the, the the people that are creating and and writing and making these these shows and and stories and movies whatever like these stories i should say i don't have to keep listing off all the different types of media you get it ryan miller this one animator who i uh, i've learned quite a bit from a few years ago he he mentioned that like you know if, if adults are making all of these things like like if they're making shows i'll just go with shows as a as a offhand example for you know animation for instance it's like you know, they're, if they're just like, we have to make this for kids, then, then it's not being made with any soul. And, you know, there are shows that exist better like that also, of course. And, you know, I don't think most of us like those. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, like, they, they're putting their all into it. I mean, you know, that's where you get stuff like the, the double entendre jokes in Rocco's Modern Life. That's where you get the, you know, the serious kind of themes of Batman the Animated Series. Um for me personally, because I mean, all I really have under my belt, I guess that kind of really applies is, is the stuff that I've done online. Um, you know, the new ground stuff was just like, it's a cheap laugh. Did you laugh at this, that this joke where Mario eats the mushroom and he gets high? Ha 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 ha. You know, like that's just kind of what that grounds down to. And I mean, regardless of who you are, then if you laugh at the joke, then you laugh at the joke and that's the, the purpose served. And I guess in kind of a roundabout way, Tome isn't too much different in that way of like, 
you know, if it's entertaining to whoever happens to be watching it, great. If whoever happens to be watching it also gets something deeper and a little more meaningful and impactful out of it, great. I don't really think in terms of, like, you know, who my audience is, like, like as far as the age range goes. I'm just, I mean, I operate under I'm making what it is that I want to make and what I would find interesting. Now, granted, I have, I guess, a little bit of, like, a more childish kind of taste. I mean, I'm a big Nintendo guy. Uh, I don't watch a whole lot of live-action shows, which I know I should be. Um, you know, I watch a lot of, you know what I guess would be considered kid shows, uh, you know, both American and Japanese, et cetera. Um, but for me, I, I guess in terms of the, the heart of the question, which is more about, you know, the impact on it and, and, and what's, um, what's, what's appropriate and what should leave an impact on kids. To start with, I don't think that kids necessarily need to be, like, so sheltered in terms of, like, entertainment because I think entertainment... Uh, again, regardless of uh, stories, regardless of the medium, I think that um, those are a pretty safe and in, in some cases very effective way of teaching kids about, uh, you know, really important things that, sh- that, that, they, that they should be aware of. And, you know, we all roll our eyes at the, you know, on a very special episode that we were talking, uh, me, me and Mike Lucas, I think when he was here apartment hunting with Steve, we were talking about that episode of um, Static Shock. And how, you know, it's very clearly, if those of you who haven't seen Static Shock, there's an episode where there's a kid who is very seriously bullied and then he gets a gun and he threatens to use it. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very well done episode, but it was also very clearly tailor fit for, you know, it was all about that, you know, I mean, because it, it featured like a couple characters that were not otherwise in the show at all. Then they were completely just about, you know, telling that specific kind of like teaching that lesson, you know. And and that's fine. And it was a good episode, and it, it, I think it did serve its purpose because I mean I I still remember it, and I think it was it was you know very well done and, and got the message across. But at the same time, again, it was an episode that was tailor fit for that. I think that even stories that just kind of have that sort of thing to begin with, like inherently woven into the overarching story, I think can be really effective too. Um, I don't think that kids necessarily need to be so shielded from like you know, absolutely every awful thing in the world. Now, you know, granted, I don't think you should be showing a five-year-old, like, a really gory death scene or a really explicit, like, you know, rape or sex in general scene. You know, it's like, I, I understand that there that there does need to be some, like, you know, easing people into the concepts of what these things are. But I also don't think that, you know, these dark topics and, and things, regardless of what they are, should be, you know, shielded away from, from people's eyes forever. Um, you know, I, uh, for me, like I actually discovered a lot about life just from the stuff that I watched, honestly, uh, for fuck's sake, I'll, I'll, I'll put this, this, this out here. This is a real fucking embarrassing example, but I basically learned what sex was by watching Austin Powers. <laughs> I learned inherently like what it, what it was more or less about. I mean, the, the, the basics of it from seeing that as like, you know, a 10 year old or whatever. Um, but yeah, and I mean, and, and that's kind of like a silly example, but, but you know what I mean? It's like, and, and I learned a lot more about like, you know, coping with death and, and, you know, again, these kind of darker topics, you know, from shows that I watched and, and the ones that left the, the biggest impact on me, I mean, I, I brought up that Static Shock episode as an example, as the kind of the extreme version of it, but a lot of series like movies, games, etc. Le- left the biggest impact on me. They just had those things kind of like woven into them. I think about like um, Final Fantasy VII, how impactful it was for Aerith to die, uh, you know, for people growing up. And there were kids playing that game. That, I mean, constantly. Uh, and and the creator of it, the the head scenario writer, I believe, was talking about how, because I believe he lost his mother, if I'm, remember- if I'm remembering correctly, and he wanted to have a very relatable kind of human moment like that, which I, I talked about you know, fantastic characters doing normal things. I mean, death is a part of life. And I think that incorporating that into it and it's like, you can't bring Aerith back to life. It's just, I think that there is a lot of value to that. Um, again, there, there definitely needs to be like easing into it. It it shouldn't be just like, here's how awful absolutely everything is. But I think that, that doing stuff like that in general is perfectly acceptable. And I think that, that it could stand to happen more, uh, which is why I'm glad, again, we have these gray areas with a lot of media nowadays. In fact, I was just reminded of a really good example a second ago. Um, I watched Dot Hack Sign on TV, 
And, um, you know, one of the things I, that I was a you know early teenager, I didn't really have a firm, real understanding of homosexuality. I think that, you know, my, my first kind of real exposure to that probably was, was South Park. And I didn't really get it at the time because I didn't understand what the deal was with Big Gay Al and, and Stan's dog, etc. But I remember um, by the time that Dot Hack Sign was airing and I was understanding the whole deal with, um, you know, Tsukasa not fully remembering what she was in real life. Uh, because she was trapped in this game world. And then uh, Subaru, uh, her love interest character, was like, I don't care if you're a, a, a male or female or whatever. Like, I'm very much attracted to you and, and care about you. And I remember thinking, like, oh, I guess they they probably did that to make it more realistic. And then I real and I, I think I had that with some level of, like, eh. Like, because, I, again, I didn't have a firm understanding of, of anything about homosexuality or, like, you know, gender confusion and identity crisis kind of things. Uh, in the first place, because I was like 13, 14 years old, right? But then I looked back on that and I realized, like, wait, no. I said they did that to make it more realistic. Yeah, because that's how life is. Hey, did you know that that gay people exist in the real world and it should be accepted as a thing that is normal? And I mean, I've talked a lot about that on the Korra Korra blog as well, um, you know, regarding the the ending with Korra and Asami and everything. But um, but yeah, like, that's that's what I'm talking about is, like, the, that was something that was just in the show, and I mean that's not a dark topic, but it, it's something that I think also, it, it, weirdly enough, like that type of subject matter is also like almost just as taboo to you know to kid shows as like death and violence and gore and nudity or whatever, like because it addresses something that has to do specifically with sexuality, like it really is it's tied directly to it, but it can't also just be about having a relationship. You know, and which is why I'm I'm glad that slowly but surely that's beginning to change. That's also something that I would like to see more, probably more than anything, uh, change in terms of like, you know, these more mature. It is, you know what? Okay, I'll say it's a mature topic. It's not a dark topic, but it is a more mature topic that I think uh, should be just integrated into more kids' media. You know, Clarence obviously has um, Jeff's parents are are two women, etc. You know, there's there's little bits and pieces that are kind of sneaking in that I'm that I'm happy that creators are getting the chance to do, and executives and whoever is in charge of letting those things pass are letting those things pass. Um, but yeah, like I mean, I, I'm going a little all over the place with this one, but what I'm saying is, I I think that there there is a line, but it, it's not nearly as like as as uh, in the position as it should be. It, it shouldn't be like you know we have to protect the children. It's like no, we don't. We don't have to turn our the next generation into a bunch of pansies, you know, that, that have to be shielded from the reality of everything. It's like, you know, if, if cartoons and comics and movies and video games can help kids more accessibly understand that that's how the world works, because there are things like this in life, then that's great. And I think that that should be pushed further, you know, but I think that also on the same note, it shouldn't be approached with this like gotta do it for the kids kind of mentality i think it has to just be like it, it's it's just treated as like this is normal this is life this is how it is um the future stuff that i work on after tome is over i definitely want to have more of that in mind because i think that that is important i think that it does need to be it, it needs to have thought put into it it doesn't need to be like beat no you don't have to beat kids over the head with it you don't have to um to pander but I think it does have to have thought put into like, you know, what are you saying with with uh, what it is that you're making and, you know, what kind of impact are you going to leave on anybody that experiences it? You know, kids or adults or, you know, pure entertainment, you know, do you get a laugh out of it or something deeper than that or otherwise? Like it does have to have thought put into it. And that's why, like for me, what I've what I've taken away from not just this question, but just my study of this in general is that I want to have more thought uh, put into that as well. Uh, so that's going to do it for now. Um, thanks for listening. And uh, yeah, so if you have any thoughts on this, I'm curious to hear what you think um, about dark topics for impressionable young minds. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And also be sure to check out the You Caring page I linked earlier to uh, help donate to Brianna Brosie. Um, and uh, if you have ideas for future Curb Blood topics, leave a comment about those or hit me up on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, whatever you feel like. You might inspire the next Curb Blood topic. And also, uh, if you haven't heard, we're going to be premiering the final episode of my web series, Tome, Terrain of Magical Expertise, at Anime Expo on uh, 4th of July weekend. 
July 5th, Sunday morning. If you can make it to the Los Angeles Convention Center that weekend, we would love to see you there if you're a Tone fan and all the main cast are going to be there as well. Uh, We hope we'll see you there. And uh, otherwise, that's it. So thanks for listening. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye.